All right, welcome back. Well, good evening, everyone. Again, I'm starting all over again. Well, the net, net the network, you know, cut off, so we're starting all of, all over again. This is what it takes sometimes. All right, you have to be dogged. You have to be determined. You have to be more than ready, amen. To to you know to engage. So please uh, pardon me if you if you were watching uh, earlier on and the network cut off. Okay, please pardon me. We're back again. So I'm gonna start all over again. <laughs> I'm going to start all over again from the beginning. Okay, so that's fine. I don't mind. I don't mind starting all over again. All right, the network, the, the whole thing just cut off. I thought I was just going to be able to fix the, you know, the network, but it's fine. I think I'm uh, connected to a better con uh, network now. All right. So, all right. Tonight, once again, we are going to continue on uh, what we have been looking into. We've been looking at the concept of... Uh, um, uh, you know, the reformation of Nehemiah and the spirit of God has really been assisting us. You can see what I'm talking about. When we, when we begin to touch into things like this, I tell you, there is going to be resistance. There's going to be a lot of challenge. All right. Thank you so much, Sister Dioni, Brother Derek. Amen. And I think somebody else is connecting. I see, I see the third person. Thank you all for connecting tonight. I'm just going to make this a short one. All right. But let's see how far we can push. Okay. Tonight, we're going to continue on chapter three, rebuilding the walls. Yesterday, we stopped where we began to, you know, uh, uh, look at what the first wall that was rebuilt, and that was the ship gate. All right. I was just talking about that. All right. It's important that we understand the sequence, the spiritual sequence, amen, of this, you know, this restoration. Note, that, let me just quickly say this. All right. The, 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 the order of these of this gates, all right, and the walls, amen, they, they, they have a, they have a, you know, a, a significance, a, 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 an important significance in our own personal life, and of course, in our own family, and of course, in the nation. So, basically, if if we want to see amen god move in our life we just need to follow the order amen of the restoration or the the the, 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 the rebuilding of this of these gates all right and and as we look at that and understand the principle of re, of rebuilding it, it's it's it, it will allow us amen to step into that arena where the favor of god amen is re, re, you know restore back into our life and and the intentions of god amen becomes even more visible i've got i've got a note that you know i, I would love to share maybe we'll look at that tomorrow hopefully because uh, uh yeah some of the things that i needed to say in fact i have not touched on them but they are highlighted in the note but let's go back to some of the things that we you know we highlighted yesterday and then um we we'll look at two, some few points again and then we'll be done all right for tonight because i feel we just need to push let's let's just cover one or two you know points tonight and then we can be done all right for tonight now the bible says in chapter 3 verse 1 it says eliashib the high priest i want you to see the responsibility with i know we talked about this yesterday night but i want to emphasize on it again because it's very important all right if we don't get this right any other thing that we try to you know build or restore it's not going to work it's not going to work this is the order god is a god of order all right god does his thing through order through systems all right one of the things i remember i was saying in, in one of the days is that the, the things of God, amen, are spiritual, but spir but, the, but the purpose of spirituality, let me rephrase my word, let me rephrase the statement. God, God does his thing, amen, through spirituality, but the essence of spirituality is to build system into our life, meaning that everything that we define to be spiritual must have order, must have structure. Must you know? I mean, that's 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 the principle of God. Amen. You will notice the way God began to create the world in the from the beginning. Everything had to depend on the next. Everything had to depend on each other. Okay. God 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 doesn't create something or that 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 he doesn't that he doesn't need or something that we don't need. God makes sure that that which he creates now, Amen, becomes that which supply that which meets our need, Amen, for the next day. That's the principle of God. So everything, Amen, you know, are interconnected. They all flow together. It's called system. When system are built, when system are in place, amen, it's easy for us to just flow, amen, in that which the Lord has ordained or has even given to us. So the first thing we saw here is that the high priest, the high priest, not this, the high priest is the most important person, amen, in the spiritual uh, uh, tradition of the, of, you know, of the, of the, of the, of the Jewish community. The high priest is the most important person. So when the high priest gets, gets, gets it right, when the high priest, amen, takes his place when the high priest begins to function within his order guess what every other thing fl flows in line it's like the concept of leadership once the leader amen aligns to truth once the leader leader take his rightful place
place once a leader amen flow in the right direction and in the right emphasis of his of, of his assignment guess what every other person every other thing you know just falls in line but once the leader doesn't do what he's supposed to be doing once the leader is not where he's supposed to be guess what every other thing just fall out of order yes it is the order of leadership the high priest was the first person so Nehemiah was very strategic amen in selling the vision amen to the key leaders and I talked about that all right when we began in in in, in chapter two all right Nehemiah was very 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 strategic amen in making sure that amen the officials the the you know the high priest and 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 uh, I think few other people were the nobles were there because you see once we once we are able to influence leadership it's easy to transform society once we're able to influence leadership in 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 any sphere it's easy to influence the followers it's influence have you noticed that in some places once there's a problem with leadership it, it affects amen the followers you know i mean in, i've seen this situation where let's assume let's let, not assume let's let's say two you know two leaders are not in good terms two two spiritual leaders two pastors are not in good terms suddenly you realize that most of the people who are under you know you know the the, the spiritual leadership of those two leaders also now begins to you know uh, uh, you know either fight themselves or they don't talk to to themselves and i always i always i've always wondered why that is in the body of christ because it shouldn't be all right it, 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 if I'm having an issue with some, you know, with a leader, I'm not having an issue with the, you know, with a follower. But what we see is that the follower also, amen, just just decide to take the battle on them on themselves, and that is not something that, all right, we should encourage in the body of Christ. But the point that I'm making tonight is that, all right, Eliashib was the was the high priest, amen. The Bible says he went to walk in rebuilding the ship gate. Listen to this. The Bible says, and the rest of the of the of the priest also followed him. The Bible says they dedicated it, amen. They, de they, they dedicated it, and they also set the door or the doors in their place. This is very important, amen. So we're seeing order. Basically, what I'm bringing out tonight is, you know, order. Order is restored. When order is restored to our city, to our nation, to our society, what we begin to see, amen, is the restoration, is the move of God, is the power of God. I always say that God doesn't move, amen, within our chaos. You will never find God move within our chaos. For God to move in any situation, the first thing he does is to restore order. I mean, when, when, when the order that is set, when the principle is set in the garden was out of order, what did he do? He went to call Adam because Adam was the person he placed in charge. That's the principle of God. That's how God works. God will never bypass. God is, God doesn't encourage subordination. And I know today this is something that has become a bit challenging, you know, in the world system. Today, the world system doesn't want order. They don't want respect. They don't want, you know, structure. They don't want it. And they want everything to flow. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. For God to move, amen, he has to set order in place. That's how he created the world. You will notice that everything were created in accordance to order. Everything, the first day creation, the second day, the third day, everything, amen, flowed according to, amen, the divine, uh, 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 you know, dependence. They, they all need to depend on each other. Imagine creating, you know, you know creating the, you know, uh, 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 the, you know the, the cattle before creating the grass. What would the cattle be eating? So, so those are principles that we need to look into. And then just before the, the network cut, I was just explaining, all right, the next gate that was built, which was, amen, the, 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 you know, the fish gate. And I'm interested in this concept of the fish gate because the fish gate basically speaks into the concept, amen, of the restoration of the economy of our life. It speaks into the economy. Are you seeing how, you know, things begin to pan out in our life? You, you Maybe you're struggling with finance. You're struggling with, you know, uh, income. We're struggling with a job. You, the, I mean, all of that speaks into the ship gate, at least from, from, the, from the human perspective. But the fish gate also speaks into God's economy, all right, that we need to go out, that we need to become fishers of men, all right, that we take all right, the burdens of God, the, 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 the desire of God, amen, in, in winning souls, in, in, in bringing people into the reality, into, into you know, uh, that, that scope where they begin to have insight and understanding about God's plan for their life. Those are all concepts of, amen, the fish gate. But 
primarily the fish gate is a place where we transact is a place of transaction is a place amen of transaction the ship gate excuse me the fish gate is a place of economic transaction remember the as we have a you know our, our own definition of economy so does god god has his own economy all right the economy of god amen is that the is that the world amen come to that place, you know, in Christ where they are redeemed, where they are saved. Prosperity, amen, begins from the condition of our heart. All right. You know, he says, it's a wish that you prosper, even as your soul prosper. That those are concepts to God's economy. God wants to bless us, but the blessings of God does not start with money. The blessings of God starts with redemption, salvation. All right. The blessings of God starts with, you know, the 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 the, 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 the flow of his morality, amen, into society. That's where the blessings of God start. The Bible says, amen, when, 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 when the righteous rules, the city rejoice. Th what that means is when the righteous begins to, you know, reflect the standards and the values of God, amen, within society, what, what, what happened is that there's a translation, amen, of, of blessings and, and prosperity and deliverance. But if, we, if we're seeking blessing, we're seeking prosperity, and we're seeking all that, but we have not, you know, invested into God's de desire, into God's heart, into God's mind, into God's counsel. Amen. For the city, for the nation. That's that's why it's important that we understand God's prophetic plan, God's prophetic agenda for our city. Because when we begin to pray, amen, in regards to that, what begins to happen is that God begins to bless us. God begins to bless the city. God begins to bless the nation. Because the blessings of God, amen, are in the context of His objectives for our life. God doesn't bless, amen, us, you know, outside His interest. God blesses His interest. So when we understand the interest of God and we and we invest into that interest what we get is a dividends amen of of god's of god's favor of god's blessing of god's healing all right so the rebuilding the, the you know the the the, the ship gate amen sp excuse me Rebuilding the fish gate, amen, speaks into the various economic aspects of our life. All right, if 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 the if the if if we have embraced the concept, amen, of the restoration of the sh of the you know of of the of the ship gate, where, amen, we've laid down our life, the sacrifice, amen, we we've taken our position of responsibility of of leadership, amen. We are praying in accordance to the will of God. We, you know, the ship gate basically is a reflection of the life of Nehemiah. Like I said, all right, Nehemiah took it upon himself, amen, to engage on behalf of a people that's what you find at the ship gate is a place of intercession is a place of leadership is a place where elders are restored back to their rightful place amen at the gate at the gate the the gate is a place where we deal with issues where we handle issues is a place where we where, where where we put things in order amen is a place where the voice of elders the voice of values the voice of truth amen amen is heard is is echoed in the land is a place where we get to deal with you know complex issue all right once we have set you know leadership in place and leadership has become visible amen to to the various aspects of our life the next thing that we're going to begin to you know see restore amen is the fish gate according to the scripture is the fish gate and like i said this fish gate is a place of transaction is a place of of, of economy is a place of prosperity is a place of blessing amen is a place where we get to be favored so when we restore that gate these are the things that we're going to be seeing the blessings of god begins to flow into our life all right and like i said just like you know this 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 concept or principle applies to society applies to the church but it also applies to our lives all right if if the gates of our life amen has been shattered the walls have been shattered guess what we won't be able to flow and walk amen the blessings of god the things of god amen will, will will be far from us the presence of god will be far from us and this is the reason why you know david in 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 chronicles 13 first chronicles 13 say come guys let's restore back the presence of god remember when you restore the presence of god the presence has to go through certain gate must enter through certain gate what is the first gate that that presence that act must follow the ship gate the ship gate it's important that we emphasize on that it's, it's important that we continue to amen 
you know rehas that because that, that that plays a key role amen in 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 what we're looking for and what we're searching for and what we're emphasizing particularly in this day where the spirit of god is speaking to us about amen the restoration of his church the restoration of his house the restoration amen of of his of his of his prophetic intentions in our life there is there is there is there is gonna be amen a manifestation of the move of god but this is how the move of god gets to be birthed this is how the move of god gets to be manifest this is how the move of god amen gets to be revealed this is where we're going to begin to sing amen the evident reality amen the experiential reality of god amen within our life within our city within our nation we have to stand in the gap and cry out to god amen for the you know ship gate to be you know to be restored and once that is restored all this thing that we are facing with lack of you know a uh, money lack of you know a uh, uh, you know a uh, uh, blessing and our the economy knows diving we are going to see god intervene because we have we are setting things in order we're setting things in order we have built amen in accordance to his will we have put amen the elders in their rightful place uh, and, and and now we're going for amen then the next thing called the fish gate is a place of transaction. What kind of transaction, amen, are we engaging in? What kind of transaction are we are we engaging in what I call kingdom, you know, kingdom transaction? Are we transacting with the things of God? Are we transacting, hallelujah, with the with the, with the with the heart of God, with the mind of God, with the intentions of God? Because once we build in accordance to divine pattern, I made a statement somewhere. Let me see if I can look at the statement. Yes, listen to the statement. To build or to restore anything into their preferred order one needs to get the accurate original blueprint less amen one find himself building outside the divine blueprint lest we find ourselves building outside the divine blueprint therefore a clear understanding amen must be attained in order to know the nature of the structure we are called to build it's important that we don't just build at random then i went further in 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 my note i said something nimrod and the rest of of his brethren began to build the tower of babel listen to this they had all they, they had all the resource they had the skill they had the managerial capacity they had the manpower all right they, they were just doing what they you know what they you know what 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 they felt was right all right the only thing they didn't have or was the approval of god every other thing they were doing amen they had it they, i mean they had the resource they had they had they had the capacity they had the vision they were doing but the only thing they did not have amen was the approval of god and and we need to be careful amen that while we are building amen that we we don't build outside the divine order outside the divine pattern outside the divine you know uh, structure or even you know uh, 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 intentions of god because it's easy for us to say we're building we're restoring but we are restoring outside the values of God. Like I said, was it this morning? That I mean, it's 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 something for us. It's something to say. Well, I'm praying. I want to see God move in my life. I want to see God move in my nation. But then, what is the agenda? Because it is the agenda, Amen, that attracts the approval of God. If the agenda, Amen, is just for self glory, if the agenda is just for our own, you know, you know, self promotion. If the, I mean, we can do a lot of things in the name of God and even for God and not necessarily involve god in it i said that this morning in our prayer devotion all right so we want to have a lifestyle we want to be able to build in accordance to the divine order in accordance to divine pattern in accordance to divine you know uh, uh, grace we want to we we want heaven amen to be involved in what we're doing and that was Nehemiah for you all right but before he stepped out into this project he waited four months as he was praying until the king amen, was able to look at his face and say, son, what's going on? Why, is he, why are you looking so sad? Even though he was afraid, but he was able to express himself to the king and say, hey, the, 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 the house where, you know, where my fathers you know, or, or I were buried is lying in ruin. And the king said, so what would you have me to do? The next thing we heard, the Bible says he went to pray and then he answered the king. So these are all, you know, principles and values that speaks to us regarding, amen, the, 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 the structural pattern, amen, and how God is so in, interested that we follow the values, the standard, amen, of his will, that we don't run, that we don't do anything outside, amen, the order of God, that we can't say because, you know, souls are perishing, let me just do, you know, you cannot just do, you have to follow the order. That's why we've got, amen, the word of God, like I said earlier on, all right, spiritual things, amen, can system 
All right. Sometimes when we talk about system, we always, you know, we, we, our mind goes to technicality. Even in the things of the spirit, there are technicality because if we don't understand how things work in the spirit, I mean, as a prophet, I think I, I, I you know, I bet I, I have that understanding in my, in my mind because I've always, I've always, you know, asked myself, is that there's a pattern, there's a way, everything fo- flows in accordance to pattern, both in the natural and the spiritual realm. So if you don't understand how God does things, uh, you know, you can always assume, and when you assume, you make mistake. So it's important that we, we, you know, we study scripture. When you study scripture, what you find, amen, is divine pattern. There's a pattern in which God used in, in relating to jo- jo- Joseph. There's a pattern in which God used amen, in relating to you know Job. There's a pattern in which God used in relating to Joshua, in relating to Moses. If, if we find amen, the assignment, we need to also find the pattern. Once we understand the pattern, and I think that, that's what you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, Nehemiah you know, get to understand. What's the pattern? So four months he was praying. You know, I made a statement, uh, it was the last week. I said, in prayer, there is strategy. In prayer, I mean, that's, that's, that mean, those are things that I have come personally, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to enjoy as a benefit of prayer. That when you start praying, God start giving you strategy. God start showing you things. God start giving you, you know, you know, principles, order, and how to things, how things can function, how things can work. And I think that is that's a good thing about our life. Like I said, God is a God of order. He's a God of structure. So the, the, the point we're making is that the fish, the fish gate comes after the ship gate. After the ship gate. This is very important that we don't forget this, that we don't, you know, uh, uh, trivialize this principle. After, amen, the ship gate is the fish gate. And the fish gate speaks into the economy of God, amen. And once we, once, we, once we get the economy of God right, guess what? Our city will prosper. Our nation will prosper. Our family will prosper. Our society, God wants to bless us. But he said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. We, seek, we, we establish, amen, the principle of the kingdom of God where at the ship gate, at the ship gate, that's where we build in accordance to divine order. That's where we set order in place. It's at the ship gate. Because who are, who are, who are the people that sit at the ship gate? The elders. That is the place where the pastors ought to sit. That's the place where the apostles, amen. That's the place where the prophet, all the fivefold ministry ought to be complete, amen, at the ship gate. Because that is the gate, amen, that Jesus will walk through. That is the place, amen, where the lamp of God, hallelujah, will walk through. That's the place of sacrifice. That's the place of renewal. That's the place of restoration. Everything that Jesus did on earth, he did it as a ship. It was led as a sheep to the slaughtering ground, friends. Yet he was the leader. It's a place of example. It's a place of exemplary life. It's a place where we show forth, amen, the values of the kingdom. It's a place where we, where, where, where we raise the standard of God high, amen, in our city. It's the place where the visibility of God, amen, becomes clear to the people, to society. It's a place where, amen, the prophet can begin to speak, amen, to politicians and to the rest of society, amen, and bring them to, bring them to alignment, bring them, amen, to order, bring them to structure. A city, a nation, amen, that has no clear you know uh, you know prophetic voice is a city that is doomed amen so when they destroy when they destroy the ship gate when they destroy the fish gate you know of course what happens leadership is thrown out of uh, you know out of the window all right the order of prosperity you know talk about the the economy of god talk about the even the prosperity of the nation one of the reasons why south africa amen is going through what amen she's going through today is because amen that ship excuse me that fish gate and of course the ship gate has been destroyed like many other gates you know there are 12 12 gates that must be restored 12 good gates that must be restored 12 good gates that must be restored to our life. Amen. So it's not enough just to build walls. We have to locate these 12 gates. We have to locate these 12 gates and we have to locate the walls. Remember, the walls basically speaks of, you know, the, the general spiritual social life of the people. But the gates are very important. Let's read uh, uh, verse 2. Of Nehemiah, book of Nehemiah, chapter 3. The fish gate was built by the sons of Anashia. Listen to this. They laid its beam and put its door and bolts. They laid its, 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 its doors 
and bolts and bars in their place. Mar Maramoth, the son of Urea, the son of Akuza, repair the next gate. I mean, excuse me, repair, the, repair, the, re repair the next section. In other words, you can see. The, I, I, I think the way these gates are built is you you fix the major gate, then you have you know the support the support gates. You have the other support gates. So the the the, the 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 ship gate is built. There are support gates. Then you have the ship. Excuse me. Then you have the fish gate, and then there are support gates. All right. It's like this. I, I mean, I need to look for how you know how these gates are back in those days. So we, maybe we can have an image of this gate. So you have this massive gate. Then you have this support. These other support gates. Then you have the next gate again. But of course, these gates are, are not located in on one place. They have different location. And this location, it may speaks of different entrance. Of course, this speaks into different entrance. All right? The ship gate all right, plays its role. The ship gate uh, the ship plays its role. The dung gate plays its role. The dung gate is where you, 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 you get rid of. I'm not even sure. Maybe that's where I'm supposed to be talking about now after the, sh after the fish gate. All right? That's where you get rid of everything that is not right in, in your life. In your life, in other words, is a place where you talk about, you know, personal reform, national reform. That's the dung gate. All right, you 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 take everything out. All right, is you they are dung. All right, they are waste. You take them out. All right, that's the, you know you don't take you don't take your your ways through the ship gate. You, you know you know these people back in those days they built in accordance to order, and that order has not changed. That's the emphasis. That's that's something the Spirit of God keep bringing back into my life. You know, many of our life are, are you know are just a reflection of disorderliness. We we live a life today that is very dysfunctional, even in our spiritual life. Why why will a why will a city it may have twelve gates? But guess what? Is a reflection of even the heavenly city. Have you noticed that in the in the heavenly city, amen, the Jerusalem that is coming down also have amen, 12 gates. 12 gates, 12 foundations. It's amazing. But this speaks into order. Alright? And there are gates in our own lives too. I remember I preached about this years ago. Years ago, I talked about you know the, the gates of our own life. There are certain things, amen, that will gain access into our life because certain gates in our life have been shattered. There's certain, you know, sickness that will continue to occur in, in our lives. There's certain demonic, you know, influence and attack that will continue because certain gates have been shattered. And maybe because we have not recognized those gates, we have not even located, maybe we don't even know those gates exist. Right? Some people don't even know if, the, if those gates are there. Meanwhile, unbelievers, they know. People who are into all this funny thing they know that your life amen has got gates the chinese people they are they are very they, have, they you know they are very clued up when it comes to those various gates into human life those who want to into the new age who are into all this eastern religion they they know that our life amen carries gates yet as christian we don't even know those things so we run from here and there <laughs> no we need to be able to locate because bible says first the natural then the spiritual Everything you see in the natural, amen, has a spiritual connotation. And that which we see, amen, in our immediate life, amen, has a divine amen, a, a, a response. And we've got to understand how those things play out, all right? I mean, I remember growing up and I had to deal with certain occurrence. There was just, you know, vicious circle in my life. And I mean, I got to a point I was almost giving up on life. Why is this circle there? And it's, I mean, it's like I know this thing. Once the circle comes, once this you know a uh, uh, circle comes to you know to to an end, this is what is going to happen to me. And it always happened like that until the Lord opened my eyes. I said, "Okay, you see, by knowledge shall the city be delivered." Until the Lord opened my eyes, I said, "Okay, so this is what is going on." Once you understand the principle, amen, you can deal with the principality. But if you don't understand the principle, and you try to fight the principality, because listen to this, principality, they walk by principle. What is principle? System. They walk by system. This is why I said, God is a God of system. If God wants to, you know, heal you, restore you, you know, you just need to, you know, observe and see how God moves in your life. Some of us were not observant. We just do things. You know, we, you know, you need to observe. 
Everything about your life are in sequence. Everything about our life are in sequence. Many things that happen to us, if you would study carefully, you will notice that you, in fact, you can stop those things because they are predictable. They are predictable. Have you noticed that Jesus never amen, used the same, the same concept of healing twice? Because he knows that the devil is watching. He knows the devil is watching because the devil watches. That's what is called familiar spirit. A lot of people, amen, are under the influence of some family. So the devil is powerful. No, the devil is very good in studying us. He studies, he studies, he studies, you know, he studies the, the city, he studies the nation. The certain things that happen within society. And you just wonder, but why is this thing happening? No, if you study, you can deal with it. Now, if you're a good intercessor, those are one of the disciplines that they will, you know, you know bring into your life. You need to be able to observe things. You see, observation is good. I'm not just talking about discernment. Yes, you need discernment, but you can actually observe things. And it's important that we observe, we learn to observe things. How do you think that Moses, is, excuse me, not Moses, now Solomon, was able to name all, you know, the plants and all these things? Because he was a good observer. He knows how to observe things. How do you think, you know, Ab um, Adam was able to name all the animals? Because, you see, you've got to observe to be able to discover the nature of things, to be able to understand why things are the way they are. All right? Observation, yes, is part of your discernment. But you cannot, you cannot just wake up one morning, amen, and think things are just going to work for you. No, you have to observe. If you follow, you've got to follow the pattern. There's a pattern. There's a system. There's a way things happen. You need to know that once you know that, you have broken the back of the enemy. So that means that you, you cannot be running around, be making noise. No, sometimes you just, that's why meditation is important. In the place of meditation, they will speak to you. They will show you things. They will reveal things to you. I mean, sometimes while I'm just meditating, maybe walking on the road and just, maybe just climbing the hill or walking somewhere or doing something, but my mind is on the Lord. Suddenly, there is, is like, you know, it's like the picture of the spirit. It's like God begins, begins to open one's eyes to sh and begins to highlight things. They begin to highlight things and show you things. Okay, now I understand. Now I see these things. Yes, it's maturity. Those are part of the principle of maturity. So tonight, I'm just going to quickly round up here because I, 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 I sense that I need to round up. But I felt I needed to just highlight these two concepts, these two gates. These two gates are important, okay? The ship gate and the fish gate. Then tomorrow, I'm going to continue amen, on the rest of the gate. And hopefully, we'll have a, a, um, a nice time tomorrow, by the grace of God, to continue to pray and seek the face of God and, and just, you know, Tonight, I just, I, I knew that I have, I have to come. I have to just push this thing. And that's what I, you know, uh, you know, I've done. Just, you just push and pray and push and pray and, you know, just have a breakthrough in the spirit. Sometimes, you know, the, 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 the breakthrough that we have, amen, are not immediately evident. You don't see them, but something has happened in the realm of the spirit. You've broken loose in the spirit realm, amen. You've touched something in the spirit realm. And I think that's something that we have to learn. We have to develop that culture, amen, of just breaking through in the realm of the spirit. Remember the I mean I, we started this the some of the, the, the network just cut and it's like are you, okay are you gonna stop? But I knew I had to come back. I had to come back because we're touching something, we want to build on something, all right? We want to build on something, we want to we want to make sure that amen, that which the spirit of God is saying in our day, in our time, amen, becomes a reality, a true reality. So we build a ship gate, amen. That's the first gate. The fish gate, excuse me, the, yes, the ship gate is the first gate. The ship gate, like I said, amen, it's, 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 it's the gate that speaks into, you know, the social, economic, amen, development and empowerment, amen, of society. Remember what we're dealing with is not just about our own personal life, amen. That's the, that's the heart of the Nehemiah's, you know, reformation. The Nehemiah's reformation, amen, it's not a personal reformation. Though it starts with, amen, the quality life of an individual. This is this is a reformation that is intercessory, all right, by value, amen, by 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 you know by by by, by principle, okay, because it deals with society, it deals with people, all right. It's not just about me. It's not God just bless me alone. No, no, no. <laughs> you 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 know we will assume or we will yes we will assume that one who is going into the reformation, amen, of Nehemiah is a mature 
person. What do I mean by that? If you have moved beyond your own God, you know, bless me. It's just me and I. Just me and I alone. Just, no, no. You've moved beyond that because the heart of Nehemiah is for the restoration of his people. It's for the restoration of his society. It's for the restoration, amen, of, of the nation. So this is, this, is, this is a reformation that deals with nation building. This deals with nation building, not self building. All right, so it is assumed that those who will be handling, those who will be connecting to this grace, to this anointing, amen, have some degree of maturity, meaning that they, they, they they've passed that stage of self, self, you know, you know, self focus, selfishness, all right, self centeredness. They've left that thing of it's me myself it's just my work my ministry no these people amen have a vision have a desire have a burden have a passion for the nation and we need that in our day we need people amen who are not self-seeking you know you can sell you can you can be seeking for things for yourself and that, i mean that's good that's good i mean if it's for yourself that's good but guess what that's not what is required in this concept that we're looking at what we're looking at amen is people that can say lord i'm standing on behalf of my community i'm standing on behalf of my community i want to see amen the the, the you know the ship gate of this community of franjuk of this community of you know uh, uh Lamont that I'm living, all right. I'm standing on behalf of a Cape Town. Let 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 your wall, let your let your gate be restored. I'm standing on behalf of South Africa. I'm standing on behalf of you know uh, 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 Nigeria. I'm standing on behalf of Ghana. I'm standing on behalf of wherever you stand. All right, you you're standing on behalf of that nation and you're raising a cry, amen, for elders to take their rightful place, amen. At, at the gate but guess what for you to do that you have to engage the spirit of the high priest because that's the first gate we see amen the high priest amen took it upon himself to go restore <clears throat> to go restore the gate the high priest the high priest so once that is done once we have fixed amen that sh that ship gate once the, the ship can go in and, and 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 go out amen and once there is order once there is life there is leadership once that is restored and sometimes that is going to take a while it's not going to be an easy thing all right to you know to 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 replace leaders to you know to fix you know the the, the ship gate it's not going to be an easy thing because you're going to have a lot of resistance. Remember the Sambalat and the Tobias, they're there to resist, to stop, you know, to frustrate the, this project. So we have to have that resilient. And, and I remember the last time we did this teaching some years back, you know, I, I could feel the same kind of attack that I'm feeling right now. Because the devil knows that you're touching something. You're touching something that, you know, Sambalat and Tobias were angry because it, it occurred to somebody to come and 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 fix the welfare of the people. That was the ang that was the anger of Sambalat and Tobiah. That somebody, I mean, it it occurred to somebody to to come and fix this condition. And the enemy will attack anyone who begins to say, "We want to fix, amen, the state of the community. We want to fix the state of the society. We want to fix our home. We want to fix our community. We want to fix our nation." Remember, fixing your nation doesn't start. You know, with you going on social media and say yes, we, 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 it's, this is this is this is what you will call a um, silent revolution. This is revolution in the place of prayer. All right, that the change itself will begin in the place of prayer, and God will connect you to people who have the ability to make things work because that's what God did. God spoke. I mean, I mean, Nehemiah got a vision. He was he, he began to pray about you know. The vision, guess what? He continued his job. He didn't need to go start creating commotion. He just continued his job. He just went doing what he needs to do. The king looked at his face. God will always create occasion for you to express that which you're pregnant with. God will always create an occasion for us to connect with the source, amen, with the platform that will give us a voice, that will give us a leverage, amen, in the place where we need, we need to see change. That's what happened. And I love it that way, all right, that this is not by might, by force. This is not power, might, no. You just continue to do what you need to do. But guess what? When heaven says it's time for change, 
Not even the Sambalat and Tobiah can stop it because now you have power. Now you have authority. You're not going on your own name. Remember, Nehemiah waited for, for, for four months, amen, to receive the go-ahead. First of all, of course, to be noticed by the king. Secondly, amen, to get the power, to get the authority because you would need authority because they're going to ask you. Who gave you the permission to come and do this? You want to say, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Asian does be lifted up. They're going to ask you, who is the king of glory? Who gave you the right? Who gave you the power? Who gave you the permission to come here and tell us to move? No, they're going to challenge you. So friends, tonight, as a roundup, I want us to understand that the spirit of the Lord is speaking to us expressly. And we need to commit ourselves, amen, to this responsibility. If your heart is being steered by the things that we've been talking about, then maybe that's a sign of God saying, I, I, I've enrolled you, amen, into this great company of those that will stand in the gap. He said, you who make mention of, of the Lord, give yourself no rest and give him no rest until Zion, listen to this, until Zion becomes, there's a, there's a time span until Zion becomes a praise in the earth. Give him no rest and give yourself no rest. So you're going to ask me for how long are you going to be praying? I don't know until change occurs. This is a lifetime job. This is a lifetime work. Amen, friends. Amen. We, we have to continue to engage. We have to continue to pray. We have to continue to seek the face of God. We have to continue to believe God. Amen. For, 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 for healing. We have to continue to believe God to touch the heart. Amen. Of those wicked, you know, uh, 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 men who call themselves leaders we have to continue to pray that lord you will remove them guess what when it was time for god to remove saul he removed him when it was time for god amen to remove you know uh, uh, jezebel he, he removed her when it was time for god to remove atalia she was removed listen to this no 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 wicked king will continue to rule forever no wicked sister will continue to rule forever no not in nigeria not in south africa come on not in not in the continent of africa no wicked king will continue to rule when god says i want to judge i tell you it would listen to this i've said this before but just think about this just think about this if they ever told china two months ago that china will find herself in this state of economic, you know, mess. In this state where the economy just go down. I mean, China will, China will, will kill that person. Can you see the fingerprint of God? Can you see the hand, the handwriting of, of God on a nation so massive? A nation that has pride herself, amen. As, as you know, as, uh, you know, as the, as the manufacturing, you know, harbor of the world. A nation that has proven to, you know, to, I mean, they were planning to take America down. Well, guess what? God made a statement. God just made a statement. Today, I heard China is saying, no, they want, they want, <laughs> they want a truce with America. They, are, they you know, they, 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 they they're trying to soft pedal. Because I tell you, in the next 10 years, that nation is not going to recover from what has hit her. Because of certain people who decide that they can undo. And undo. In fact, China was playing God. We don't believe in God. And anyone who believes in God will kill them. They've been, they've, they've been shutting the church down. Doing all kinds of evil. But God just made a statement. What are we saying? Evil will not overcome. Evil will never rule over righteousness. We have to continue to proclaim it. I could remember all the prayer I've been praying for China. I'm praying for you know the, 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 the communist party there. God is going to bring that thing down. Just as God is bringing down capitalism, God is bringing down, hallelujah, communism. There has to be another zim that will, <laughs> that will align to the ways of God and to the will of God. At least to some certain degree. <laughs> you know, Americans, they're still allowing God to, you know, to, you know, at least thank God for, you know, Donald Trump. God is using him to realign the nation back in his own little way. It's not like he's perfect. But not in the nation where everybody amen, is, is under a, tyra a, a, a tyrant. 
And God says, no, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, you see, I'm going to touch that economy. I'm just going to touch the economy. China today is like a ghost town. Can you believe that? If, if somebody gave their prophecy last year that this is what, I'm sure nobody will believe it. But we know that God, when he wants to move, he moves. Nobody can stop him. What am I saying? Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to stand in the gap. Let our eyes be focused, be fixed, amen, on that which God has promised. God will never fail. His word will never fail. There is a prophetic program of God for our day. There is a prophetic program that we're tracking. There is a prophetic program that I'm tracking, amen, for this nation. The ones who thought, all right, they will not go to Zondo Commission, all right, that they will escape. I was reading today, even the banks, all right, will be, will be brought to Zondo Commission. Zondo Commission, for those of us who don't know Zondo Commission outside South Africa, is a place where, amen, those who want to destroy the economy of this nation, all right, are being probed. They are being probed. So all, even all the banks today, yes, that's our prayer. God is answering our prayer. God is answering our prayer. And it's going to be like that. Those who think, oh, well, I have, I have, I'm, 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 I'm so well seated. Amen. Nothing can move me. In one day, God will remove them. God will remove them. Whichever way, amen, he has ordained and designed, he will remove them. Because this is a new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day for Africa. It's a brand new day, amen, for the people of the dark skin. It's a brand new day for us. It's a brand new day, hallelujah, for the nations of the world. It's a brand new day, a day of redemption, a day of restoration, a day where we are preparing, hallelujah, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that coming will pan out in different areas, in different dimensions. But we have to be ready. We have to get our house in, in order. We have to set our heart, hallelujah, on the things that are set above. Father, we want to honor your name. We want to thank you for your spirit. Anyone who doesn't fear you in this new day. As is our heart seared with hot iron. We hear your heart. We hear your mind. When I look at what is going on in China, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that a nation in one day, 400 billion US dollars just went down the drain. In one day, after pouring 172 billion to stable the economy. No. You said, I'm going to touch this nation. I'm going to show them. I'm going to prove to them that there's a God who rules. Now today we heard the people are revolting. It's a day where communism is coming down. Everything that has hindered, frustrated, stop and try to destroy your prophetic plan. <laughs> they will see their end. We're praying. We will continue to pray. We will give you no rest. Neither will, are we going to give ourselves rest. We thank you, Lord, for what your spirit is doing. Yes, we're feeling the impact, yes, of that stone cut without human hand. We see, oh God, Dagon is coming down. The, high, the, high, the, the loftiness of men and their high looks are coming down. It's a day where the mountain of the lost house is being exalted. We thank you. We honor your holy name. Thank you, Father, for the restoration of your gates in our lives, in our city, in our nation, in our community. We honor you. We usher you back. Come, take your place. Like David, Father, we, we carry this, this ark on our shoulder. The ark must be carried on the shoulders of men. We carry this ark and we bring it back to the place of your glory. Take your place. Have your way. Reign, Lord Jesus, in our land, in our nation. From West Africa, Lord, to East Africa, to Central Africa, yes, Lord, reign to North Africa. Reign, Jesus. Reign, Jesus, to Southern Africa. Reign in our continent. Reign in our land, O oh God. Reign across the nation. Reign in the Pacific. Reign, Almighty God, in America and Europe. Reign, Father. Reign among the Scandinavians. Reign, Jesus. Let your reign be felt in Ireland, O oh God. 
We pray, Lord Jesus, you're the God of the nations. Let your spirit flow into the Caribbean. We thank you. You are the God of the nation. All eyes shall behold and see that which, yes, you've done. We thank you. We bless your name. Lord, I thank you for my brethren this evening that have tuned in to join, to connect, oh God, with this live broadcast. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit, oh God, that is at work in them. That every time we connect with you, oh God, we grow, we develop. There's a deposit of life. Thank you, Father, for the restoration of the ship gate in their life. Thank you, Father, for the restoration of the fish gate in their life. We honor you, Spirit of God. The Lord, this two gates will begin to bring order back into their life. We thank you, God, for capacity to represent you. Yes, Father, in a way where your glory will become manifest, not just in them, but through them. We honor you. We glorify your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. For what you have done today in Jesus name amen and amen and amen well I've come to the end of this uh, uh, evening's broadcast where I guess this is one of the uh, uh, shortest um, broadcasts we've done well it's not short but it's 15 minutes this is just about 10 minutes an hour but we want to thank God and give thanks to God Thank you so much, my dear brother. Amen. Uh, Pastor Akin, thank you for connecting tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, sis, uh, sister Shola Kotun also. Thank you so much, my dear sister, for connecting. Brother Derek, amen, and his wife, uh, uh, Sister Diony, September. Both of you, thank you so much for connecting. And the rest that are watching that I can see you, thank you so much. appreciate your connection. All right. We're going to have this on audio. So if you want to also listen to this on audio, you should have the audio in the next uh, uh, 40 minutes thereabout. It will be ready. Thank you. God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. Amen. And keep praying. God bless you. Bye bye.